So I am tired of fighting with this heavy clay soil and I am going to put in raised beds on this hillside and I've laid out a line that's basically about 20 feet wide um, which will be enough for two 4x8 beds and then I've come out 8 foot and put another line um, so I have to level the ground here and I don't know if you can see what this hillside is but I'll update the video Basically what I've done is I've taken a shovel, or first I took a level and put it on the ground and uh, got it level on top of a 2 before running downhill. And then I measured the end that was down here, uh, the farthest downhill, to see how far it was from the bottom of the level uh, to the ground. Then I took my uh, shovel over there, measured up on the shovel, and I basically dug down on the high end about that far a um, little farther than halfway across and basically stacking the dirt up so I'll take the tiller and uh, you can kind of see this clay soil by the way this is like horrible it hasn't rained in I don't know a week but it is still extremely wet um, and just about the time that I got midway through, I hit nothing but rocks. It's a rock ledge that runs across there. So uh, I'm hoping that by the time that I spread this out and chop it up with a tiller, get it spread it out, that it'll be closer to level. Um, I've done about enough to put one 4x8 piece in. I only dug over. so. I guess I should also say there's going to be on the the 4x8 part over on this side will be a walkway in order to get around the 4x8 garden box so from that corner down I really need about 8 foot which would allow for a foot on this side and at least 2 foot on this side on the 2 foot on this side and a foot on that side with a little bit of play because I'm really not sure I'm going to be able to get this leveled but uh, I wanted to make sure for this first one going in and since the slope of the hill is about the same most of the way down until it gets almost to the bottom once I figure out this first one then the other ones hopefully will go quicker so it's taken me about believe it or not about six hours but the clay soil is uh, extremely tough um, plus I've had to dig out every other shovel is you hit a rock and let me kind of show you what I mean by that over here is my rock pile all of the ones that aren't covered by leaves are the ones I've dug out uh, so a lot of rocks come out of that little four uh, two and a half or three foot by eight foot section um, the stack that's under the rocks that aren't covered in leaves are ones that I removed when I tried to till this uh, or plow it last year um, so you can kind of see if I go back over here that so there's a huge rock right here basically back to the right stop digging it To see the outline of it better now all the way up to there massive rock just a few inches away from it is another one runs all the way over to here just a few inches away from it is another one that runs from about right there all the way up so trying to make do hoping this works out Okay, so I went to Home Depot 
and uh, bought the materials for the first frame so in the lumber I have enough for two frames but in the soil only have enough for one frame it is eight of the two square foot garden soil and 16 40 pound bags of compost and manure um, you also need one 4x4 four four will do two beds. You use that for the corners to join the sides and the ends. Um, one 4x4 four four will do two beds, and I already had a 4x4. Four four. But uh, the material cost that's in this bed of this truck was $150. It would be a lot cheaper um, to get bulk compost and bulk soil but nobody will deliver it out uh, out here uh, I checked two or three places and nobody nobody was interested that's kind of one of the downfalls of living out in the boondocks just a quick update it's been raining for several days um, last well actually since I bought this lumber and stuff it's been raining um, which has been over a week so uh they're calling for a storm to come in tonight. I went ahead and built out this first one. Um, basically what I did was measured. And uh, kind of see I've got this level. All four sides are level right now. I've got a low end down there I got to fill in. And a low spot over here to fill in. Um, so I took one of the 2x12s and measured it. And it was 8 and a quarter in length eight foot and a quarter inch so I cut the end pieces at four foot and an eighth inch and then I measured uh, 11 inches of some four by four I had around here for each four corner and basically I stood the sides up uh, I laid a two before on the ground to kind of keep everything relatively level and put it underneath the end here and then I brought the side piece up and put it on the same two before and then that allowed me to tack in place um, where did I do it at ah, right there so I just tacked it in place in the center which would allow me to rotate the end piece and the end pieces have some bows and so does the sides and I put it so that it bows out because there's going to be a lot of weight going in here for dirt and that way it'll push the bow back out I didn't measure to see if they were square um, the corners were square it ain't got to be that perfect um, but I did need it to be level on all four sides which it is and I've got some filling work to do here so basically I'm going to fill in these low spots um, this ground is still super muddy so I basically just have to pick up mud clots put them over there pack it down when I get that done I'll put cardboard down in the center so that it extends up a couple inches all the way around against the original ground and then I'll add this I'll probably do it like 50 50 so I'll add a bag of the soil and then two bags of the compost manure get it mixed up and then I'll just keep going um, I've also got a uh, Three cubic foot bag of peat moss left over from last year that I'm going to add to it and my original estimation was that it was going to take around 18 cubic foot or 36 cubic foot uh, between 32 and 36 cubic foot 32 32 cubic foot um, because I needed 16 and 16 so I've got enough here to do that I've got uh, 16 of the soil one two three four twelve thirteen of the compost manure and three of the peat moss which comes out to 32 so i get a little bit further along and i'll stop and show you what i've got i don't know if you can see or not but i now have the low spots filled in and basically what i did is i put a small lip um, if the board wasn't completely on the ground i would 
squash the dirt with my foot under the board and then kind of build up a little lip around the inner part and that's mostly just so that uh, eventually after I put the cardboard down once it rots away I don't want the new soil to be able to wash out from under the bed and some people will say to fill the bed up with like a foot of native soil but as you can tell I'm on a hillside here and I don't really have um, that much to spare so I'll make do okay so the cardboard I had wasn't quite big enough to cover the bottom um, I did have a whole roll of four foot landscape fabric and I've just kind of laid it in there and kind of formed a tub around the sides there's two pieces and then that way as I put the dirt in I can kind of pull up on the sides so that there's no chance that uh, weeds or anything would grow between the board and the fabric and uh, hopefully that works if you notice the edges um, I've got three bags of the two cubic foot of garden soil in here now and I put it in there and I pulled the edges of the landscape fabric up that way the soil can go all the way up against the wood inside of the landscape fabric and keep weeds from growing uh, into the bed and I've done it all the way around as you can see even on this side it's kind of folded over but it's the same way and then uh, if there's any landscape fabric sticking up after I get it filled up I can just clip it off with scissors alright so this is pretty close to full with um, six of the garden soil and uh, five of the compost manure mix and one of the peat moss. So I know it's going to settle once it gets wet and it's getting ready to rain, which is kind of why I'm rushing around and can't hardly breathe. But uh, what I'll do is go ahead and uh, level this out a little bit better and then I'll wait until after this storm and rain and stuff and uh, level it out again and add more soil or compost or whatever it needs and a quick word of advice put the, uh, the peat moss in uh, from the very beginning so do like a bag of the soil and one bag of the compost manure and maybe a third or a quarter of a bag of the peat moss and get those mixed around and do that layer it all the way up like that because I made the mistake of waiting until the very last layer to put the peat moss in and it was really extremely hard to get to mix up all the way down through the other three layers so uh, that's it for now I'll update later so I went and got the lumber to build the other seven 4x8 beds that I need to build before I can do the 5x10 beds and also the two foot wide beds that are going to be in an L shape um, about 10 foot on one side of the L and about 20 foot on the other side give or take I won't know until I've got the other beds laid out but uh so I bought, uh, see if it'll focus there, 2 by 12 by 8 foot, number 2, Prime. These are the cheaper 2 by 12s. They have knots. They might be warped. Uh, the big thing that I found, though, is every one of them is a different length. Anywhere from 8 foot and an eighth to 8 foot and 3 quarters and everything in between. Um, I just cut let me go over here and show you I just cut the uh, end pieces so seven boards no two are the same length so basically if you want your boxes to be square you have to measure each one before you cut it in half this will form the ends um, I'm trying to do this outside it's been raining on and off so that's kind of where I'm at right now I'm getting ready to cut the 4x4 four four corners you can see the other bed over there you can probably hear my chickens 
that get all excited whenever I'm outside. Standing there like, hey, come see me. But uh, there's the bed that I've got completed. It has been raining on and off yesterday and today. I'm going to let that soil settle and add more to it. Did not use near as much as I thought it was going to use. It ended up using six of the two cubic foot soil and six of the compost manure and one of the three cubic foot peat moss is what I've got in there now and it might maybe use another another couple of the compost um, I want to have two or three inches to play with on the top for adding a mulch to keep the soil wet in the hotter months but uh, and I also have a, a couple of the boards because I originally bought enough wood to do two frames so I've got two of the side pieces out there and the rest are still in the truck and zoom in here as you can see like I said it's been raining that's heavy clay soil there's literally water standing there and matter of fact even the yard has water standing uh, usually when it rains and the ground gets like this it'll take a day or two before that water soaks in that's laying on top of the ground and that's a hillside so it should be running downhill Let's see if I can zoom out and you can see the hill uh, you can kind of tell it's a hill see it better that way so literally my whole front yard is a hill starting all the way up here at the car so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get the 4x4s cut and I might show you some video of that. If not, I'll show you the video of me putting these together. So back in March I built this raised bed garden. Fenced it in. Didn't really do a lot of videos. I just wanted to get it done. Eight raised beds, landscaping cloth, pine chips on the ground, field fence, also with a layer of poultry fence. Um, I used just a T-post uh, doorway I got off of Amazon a lot cheaper than I could have built one for. Go inside here. Kind of show you what I got going on. I uh, was looking into doing drip irrigation because it's just kind of hard to get out here and water this every day. You can kind of see I just some excess water that was in the hose there. Um, this is the uh, PEX tubing, half inch PEX tubing I've got run all the way around the outer perimeter of the garden. Um, I ordered a kit from DripDepot.com. I definitely recommend them. They have uh, free shipping on orders over $49. They put kits together for traditional gardens, raised beds, uh, container gardens, etc. This kit, I don't remember the exact cost. It was around $250. That was with the electronic timer and stuff. Um, comes with everything that you need. Very simple to install. Let me show you what I've done. I've already done this corner. Let me go ahead and start here. Matter of fact, so my house is over there. It's maybe 50, 60 feet away. And the... It never had a outdoor faucet. So I put one in when I built this garden so I could run a hose out here and water it. And um, these raised beds drain so well that if it rains, four or five hours later, the soil is dry again. So uh, definitely got to keep up with watering the plants. And uh, so that's how I got to drip irrigation. So what I plan on doing, though, is if I... If I do this as a permanent install, what I would have to do is dig a, a trench from here over to the door, run the PEX tubing in the ground, and then if it ever freezes up or anything, I have to dig it back up, etc. So when it all come in, I realize that it's all basically plug and play, and it has a garden hose fitting, so what I could do is put the head station on this post, then just bring my garden hose from the house drag it across the ground like I normally do screw it into the post 
and then in the winter time when I'm not using the raid bed system I can just disconnect the hose and reel it back inside of course if I mow the yard I got to do the same thing move the hose but that will keep it from freezing up um, so I bought the raised bed kit and then I bought as an additional item to the raised bed kit this head timer that um, seven days a week you can set up individual daily watering schedules up to twice a day for uh, I can't remember the minutes but it's, it's quite a bit more than I probably ever need so um, this was the only thing that was I bought in addition to the kit also I bought it from Drip Depot they had about the same price as for that unit that was on Amazon com so not a big deal then there is a um, adapter there that goes into a filter water filter then there's a pressure regulator and then there's the adapter to make it work with the PEX tubing so up at the end of this pipe whenever I get it done I'll cut the pipe to length attach it run the hose over put the battery in set the timer alright so I watched a video from Drip Depot how to install this this is really simple you literally cut this tubing with a pair of scissors so I come down where my first bed is going to be at um, after I got the main half inch line run all the way around the outer perimeter um, so then I come over I cut I install a T it just pushes into the hose and then you tighten the knobs up um, there's a barb in there um, so it tightens up against the barb pushes the hose against it so it can't go down so I put a T measured over down here I put a 90 degree a little short section of tube with a C clamp to hold it onto the bed another 90 degree a little sh short section with a shutoff valve that shutoff valve is a requirement because it not only controls the amount of water that goes into the bed it also controls the flow rate and the volume so you can adjust each bed based on the watering needs um, then another section of tubing with a couple more C clamps and then when you get down here you've got a um, an adapter with a cap on the end of it that basically plugs off the end of this hose and then you take the cap off you need to flush the line out or something like that so that's basically how each bed will be um, once I get all of this done the next section is with a tool that they give you so um, I got tomato plants in here these last two here actually got frost bit <laughs> um, late late year frost but you can kind of see the they're kind of looking a little sad because they just don't get enough water um, but so there's three plants wide in this bed so what I'll do is I'll come in using the hole that drip depot sold me with a kit I'll poke a hole here a hole here a hole here and you use this barb fitting on a piece of quarter inch line that you then run the length of this bed um, and it will drip irrigate this one bed so getting ready to do the next part I can't actually I don't have my camera stand or anything with me so this is about the only details you're going to get oh one other thing to keep this main line from moving what I did was I had some uh, landscaping uh, clamps that I bought for this uh, poultry netting to clamp down to the ground so it would stay flush with the ground and I put that over one of the T and basically what that does is it keeps this from moving even if you kicked it it won't move and let me show you what those look like they look like this they are six inches in length so basically if that was the tubing you just put the clamp over the tubing shove it down the ground and uh, it holds the tubing in place so I'll go ahead and finish out the rest of this and when I get these um, other channels run I'll kind of show you what I did <laughs> 